So we'll just add private uh, tune frame as integer equals zero. And we can use that to manage which uh, animation frame they're on during their walk cycle and things like that. Uh, let's see. So a couple of subs um, or functions and subs that we're going to do are um, public sub move and uh, parameter we're going to want for this is going to be direction let's say as an integer so I'm just going to send it a number to represent the movement direction uh, there will be four movement directions north south east and west um, and then we need to be able to fetch the tune source uh, from the from the character graphic that we uh, bring in. So now we haven't actually brought in our character's graphic yet, so we're going to want to do that. And I've prepared a little graphic here uh, for Rad Marvin. And so I'm going to come down to my uh, in my solution explorer. I'm going to come down to my uh, content class here and uh, I'm going to add, now well, let's see, actually I want to add this under my graphics folder. I want a, a subfolder here for uh, tunes because we may, you know, in, inevitably we're going to want to add uh, NPCs as well. So this is where I'm going to keep my character sprites. So I'm just going to create a new folder, call it tunes. And then I'm going to take my little graphic, drag it in there. Where'd you go? Ah, oh, man. Sorry about that. It is not participating. Okay. Let me try this again. There we go. Somehow I kept mousing over these uh, things here. So, if you want to see that, this is my character. Um, so what he has is, uh, you know, a, a three-frame walk cycle for each direction. Uh, for now, we're just going to be, you know, bringing in a static image, and then in the next segment or sub-segment, we're going to be actually moving him and then animating him. So that's our guy. Uh, you're welcome to use your own characters if you want for your project. So what I need to do now, um, as always, I have to load this into my textures uh, global. So uh, before we can actually start grabbing source rectangles from that image, we'll need to bring it into our uh, project in our globals and textures class. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a little subsection here called tunes and then we'll do a public shared rad marvin uh, as a texture 2d and then I need to bring him in down here so I'm going to say Rad Marvin equals globals dot content dot load of texture 2D and then I have to spec specify the asset name or the path to that file it's going to be in my graphics folder under tunes and then my file name was just rad.png, so I'm just going to say rad. And we should be good there. So now we can start grabbing um, some rectangles from that uh, source file. I'm going to go ahead and save my work here. Okay. I'm going to go back into my tune class. And here's where we are going to create our function to return a rectangle for our character's position. So what I'm going to say is private function fetch tune 
source. I'm going to shorten that, sorry. And uh, again, I'm going to use the direction as an integer. And that will allow me to determine which way he's facing to grab the right segment of that image. So I will say return rectangle. And I'm going to select case direction. And I'll do case 1, case 2, case 3, and case 4. Um, let's see, case one, I am going to use his uh, forward facing or downward, let's see, where's my dude here, okay, so I'm, I'm going to use this as his primary direction uh, where he's facing downward or directly at the screen, um, so that's going to be zero, zero, uh, going out to 32, 32, so... Um, starting at the top left and moving out 32 pixels. I'm going to say um, s rect equals new rectangle 0, 0, 32. Now, if you're wondering where s rect is coming from, um, that will be from our main class here. Go ahead and save here. Or rather, it would be if I hadn't omitted it from the uh, previous video. So let's go over to our world screen class. Whoops, did not mean to bring that out. Um, going to open my world screen class back up. And I will come down here above our new sub. Let's see. And I'll say sprite source sources and I will do private as rect as a rectangle and let's see I think that'll do for now let's just uh, go back to our tune class here back to our fetch tune source and finish filling in these uh, directions so you know, I could say this is my downward facing direction. So I'm also going to want uh, an upward facing direction. I am going to say s rect equals new rectangle. And uh, let's see, it should be zero to the left or to the right and 32 pixels down again the tile size is 32 by 32 uh, yeah so actually wow I was wrong that's going to be his leftward facing uh, direction so I should probably specify that so I don't confuse myself Looks like this one's going to be right, and this one will be up. I always make a mess of uh, these for myself. <laughs> end up getting my directions confused, and then when I go to do my movement cycles, uh, end up pulling the wrong stuff. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, do s rect equals new rectangle. 0, 64 down, 32 by 32. Finally, s rect equals new rectangle. Should have just copied and pasted. Um, down, let's see, 32 more is going to be 96. So 32 by 32. And finally, we need to return our source rectangle. So we'll say return s rect. And end function. 
Alright. Now that we've set up the tune, we need to tell our world screen to draw him. So we're going to go into our world screen class and go down to our drawing sub. And we don't want to draw him in with our tiles. So we'll wait until our tile draws are done and then we will draw him last so he's always uh, at the surface or at the top. Um, in a, you know, in a multi-layer environment, you know, where you want your character to be able to walk into certain areas um, that are at different layers, you know, maybe under bridges, things like that, uh, you may not always have him being drawn at the top. Uh, or you'll, you know, it, you'll end up handling this a little bit differently in those situations. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple. Uh, I'm going to say globals.spritebatch.draw textures uh, Rad Marvin, and so I have to draw the destination and the source. Let's see here. I have to add these. So we'll say new rectangle for destination, and um, we want to draw him at tune screen x times thirty-two. And um, so that's going to be 8 times 32 pixels. Should put him um, 8 tiles to the right. And then we'll do tune screen y times 32. And we will draw him 32 by 32 pixels. And now we need to grab our source. Um, from our graphic. So we want that source rectangle, we'll say fetch tune source. And we have to select the direction. So I'm going to just uh, go with one. And I don't want any uh, color tinting, so I'm going to keep this uh, color dot white. All right, that's simple enough. Let's go ahead and save our project. So we should be able to actually run this now and uh, see him on the screen. And since you know we haven't associated him with um, a map location at this point, uh, he he's really unaware of his surroundings. Uh, so he'll no matter where he's at, uh, he'll always be right in the middle of the screen. So that's what we should see here. And as you can see, we uh, fetched his downward facing graphic. We should be able to go in and change this number here, which is what we'll end up doing you know, with keystrokes when he's uh, walking. Now let's see what happens when we change that to two. Now he's facing to the left. Uh, so if we put in three, he'll be facing right and also upward if we use four. So, all right. So I guess uh, that covers this subsection. Uh, next up, we will be learning how to uh, associate him with the map and his actual location in the world and move him around. So we will continue uh, shortly with that.